Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven. Thank you for joining. If this is your first time, I'm going to try to answer one of your questions. There is a short answer to this, and there's a much more detailed long answer. And I'm going to try to give you the short answer if you are unfamiliar with what lens resolving power is. So just a little bit of background is that the Canon 90D and the M6 Mark II have very tight megapixel sensors, 32.5, and the photo sites are very, very small, and I've done a bunch of videos on this, and what was happening is that camera owners, you know, shooting on the 70D or the 80D, they were taking their lenses and they were putting them on the 90D and they weren't as sharp, and they were really frustrated. I, I understand, I get it. They wanted to really exploit those sensors. They had to go out and buy new lenses. Why? Because they needed better resolving power. Resolving power means that the lens can project an image with very, very fine detail. If you look at MTF charts, there's typically a micro contrast curve. And then the second curve usually deals with resolution. I've made some videos on that as well. So the short definition is that the resolving power of a lens is when it can define two very, very small points next to each other as individual points. A low resolving lens would see it as a single point. That's kind of the short definition. Lens resolving power is defined by a few important things. I'm going to try to list the most important. If Roger Sakala over at Lens Rentals wants to do a blog post, or maybe he already has, I would love to read it. But for the basic beginner, what you need to understand is that a single lens is not one piece of glass. It is made up of multiple pieces of glasses and light does some very weird things when it passes through an opening like an aperture or around an object is that it bends just a little bit. And this bending of light is referred to as diffraction. Refraction is a little bit different when we're talking about light passing through different substrates. So when light is coming through air and then it hits glass, it changes its wavelength and it changes its angle. So as light passes through a lens, we're dealing with diffraction, we're dealing with refraction, and light is starting to go in different directions. So by the time it's projected onto the sensor, it's very different than what it was when it first entered the lens. The important takeaway message from this is number one, that lens design is critical. Lens design deals with an optical formula where there are lens engineers that sit down and they plan how the optics of a lens will work. And there's different shapes and curvatures of lenses. As the lens becomes more complex, the chances and the probability of problems also increases. One of the problems with optical formulas is that they're patented. So when a camera company finds a great design for a lens and somebody else wants to make a focal length in that range, the optical formula has to be different, which means it changes the number and the type of lens elements. And so this complicates things because formulas are different in terms of their performance, but companies have to do this, otherwise they're gonna get sued for patent infringement. And this is why we get so many differences in optical design for similar types of lenses. Now, there are some ways around this. For example, a zoom lens typically deals with different focal lengths. You can zoom in and out and it changes our field of view. And because of this, zoom lenses typically require more lens elements. A prime lens, on the other hand, typically deals with one specific focal length and because of that, it can be made a lot more simple than a zoom lens. So right off the bat, if you are worried about lens resolving power, you could take it to the bank. In almost every case that I can think of, with the exception of damaged or defective lenses, primes are almost always universally going to be sharper, dealing with micro contrast and resolution, than zoom lenses. You're, if you're really worried about resolving power or sharpness, primes are a great way to start. Any lens that is stopped down from wide open to maybe f4, 5.6, f8, is that the lenses get sharper as you stop them down. So if you have a lens that's kind of like on the border and it feels kind of soft, Stop your aperture down. Most lenses are not their sharpest wide open. Stop it down just a little bit. Another important side note about this is that the manufacturing process and the tolerances designed by the, the lens maker are very important because we're dealing with an imperfect material, glass. I made a video talking about how lenses have different sharpnesses, even the same model. If I have a certain prime lens and you have the same exact prime lens, they're not always going to perform the same. In fact, 
that can be very different and these variances in lenses are normal. Now, let me give you an example. The rumor has it is that when Apple makes lenses for their smartphone cameras is that they throw away anywhere between 30 to 50% of them. This might just be a rumor, but they make the lenses, they analyze them, and they just throw away the bad one. And then on the other hand, we have companies that make very high-end, very expensive lenses assembled by hand in many cases. What you can expect typically on high-end lenses is that the manufacturing process is more precise for those lens elements. And you can expect that when you're paying a premium for a very expensive lens. It doesn't guarantee it'll be sharp. And because of these wide variances in lens design and construction and, and making them is what you're getting when you pay for that really high-end expensive lens is typically you're paying for higher tolerances, your, your higher performing lenses that are closer within spec. And when you pay for that really, really cheap lens, I can guarantee you the variation between a very cheap lens is going to be all over the place. In a perfect world, obviously, you would hope that expensive lenses all perform exactly the same, but even at the highest standards, it just doesn't happen. Now, there is a lot of things I'm not talking about in terms of coatings and some other things. If somebody wants to make a comment in the description, if you guys got articles, that would be great. So in conclusion, the optical design of the formula, the number of lens elements, the tolerances allowed for that lens design off the bat, those are gonna be your most important things when we're talking about lens resolving power. In any event, thank you for your question. If you have a science-based photography question for me, let me know in the comments below. And if you're struggling to learn your camera, check out one of my many tutorials. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.